Hey, Bjorn Strong in the arm here. Welcome back to Martinez, where we're, we gotta go and talk to that foul mouthed little uh, Kuno. But first of all, can we figure out why? Uh, okay, I was thinking maybe this was one of the checks that was unlocked, one of the psychology checks. But it's not, so I guess we can ignore trying to figure out why we have a big crush on him. I mean, that's totally what it is, obviously. Anyway, Kuno, did you steal some locusts? Come swear at me some, Kuno. There we go, there we go. Kuno saw your wheel backhand! Sweet graffito action, pig! Kuno likes that delinquent shit! <laughs> Papa's bad to the bone, Kuno. Rotten to the core. Uh, Kuno's pa is, you're just shit at life, he says without malice. Now what's your case with Kuno? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to know anything about any missing locusts, would you? No, Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. So he knows locusts are bugs. Oh my god! The little one seems to struggle. I told you that shit is lame! Shut up, see? Now they're gonna take you to lame prison! She sounds like she's about to cry out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound lameness. Uh, now hold on, no one's lame here. Just tell me what happened. Deny everything, Kuno! You need a lawyer up! Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present! My gosh, there's definitely something going on here. Remember his pig's head shack? You should check it out. All right, you know what? I've got the money. I could wear some fall gear for 15 real. I'm rolling it now. All right, here are some pants. Here, pig. Here, pig, we fall now. Performance buddies. Uh, ooh, that was a secret task, too. Kuno can already see who's soaring through the air like a fucking eagle. He looks up at you with pride. Pigs and Kuno's debt now! Money debt! I mean, I paid you, man. Money debt doesn't mean anything. He's just saying words. They're not in his deck. All right. I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care! Oh, of course he doesn't. Well, these things are gonna give me some more saber fair and some more physical instruments. So when it's time for a beatdown, um... I've got the, these to put on. This shirt was giving me some rhetoric, but minus on empathy. This also gives me minus on empathy, but some extra volition, which I do like. So let's let's take that. Um, right. We're gonna go check out this dude's shack. Oh wait a minute. Was there something I? Oh my gosh. What I just miss? Well, I'll check out of here, then I'll go back. So. It's crawling with locusts in here. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising, accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants? Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. The lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook, and turns to you. Of the locusts. Uh, for the lip missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Stop being so sarcastic, Kim. Oh, I'm not being sarcastic at all. We are making real progress here. When someone says they're not being sarcastic, it's usually a good sign that they're being very sarcastic. Uh-huh. So what do you think, Kim? Is the Insolidian Phasmid nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The phasmid doesn't exist. He shrugs. But what do I know? Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmid is impairing your judgment. All right, we should talk to Kuno about this and get him to stop. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You're doing just fine. All right. Now, what was the... There was a perception thing that was um, right by the door. Here it is. The sound of melting snow dripping off the roof. It's strange. It's not even in the top five strangest things. Um, I want to check that out too. Let's, uh, Kuno? Fuck, does Kuno care? 
I know you took the locusts from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah, he says slowly, meeting your gaze with some defunct. Kuno took the bugs, so what? So it wasn't the phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. I was really hoping it would be the reed phasmid ate the locusts, not you, Kuno. Yeah, well, Kuno's all you got, bitch. You say you don't give a fuck about bugs, then you go and build a whole bug town. It's not a bug town, it's a city of locusts, he says, enunciating every syllable. Locusts aren't just bug shit. Take them out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Stop, Kuno S wails from behind the fence, then buries her face in her hands. You stop! It's not their fucking night, Locust City! Night City! City of Rage! There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again, the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. City of Rage sounds like a cool place. Kuno the pig! Kuno the pig wants to help you, she moans. That's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're... An artist? He pushes his chest out. Maybe I am an artist. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Hmm. Hold on. I hear you right. You said I. Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. He steps closer. I fucking say I when I wanna and Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. This is what he sometimes does when things get tense. Nod, making art's a worthy calling. I'm something of an artist myself. Oh my god, Kuno! He's gonna make you totally lame in like three seconds! Don't let him, Kuno! Yo, fuck you, sis. Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free! He tears the buttons of his shirt, trying to rip them open. They don't give way. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a... <sniffs> Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You have to take me away. A leaden silence fills the yard. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves, someone closing a window. So that's what this is about. Say nothing. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He's turned completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. You got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist traps alone. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. The locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. I don't need a locust, so anyway, shit is lame now. He turns towards the fence. See, was right. The girl's face appears ag again above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. Okay, now it's settled. I Well, what's going to happen to the locusts? Kuno going to let the locusts fucking die. Okay, now it's set settled. I better be off. The fuck you trying to catch anyway? He asks before you leave. With the traps. The insulindian phasmid. Huh, he mutters to himself. He recognizes the name. Wait, you know what the Insolidian Phasmid is? Bitches think Kuno does no shit, he says angrily. The fuck out of here, Kuno is tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. Huh. Yeah, let's get out of here, Kuno. All right, um, what are we supposed to do now? Just go back report to the cryptozoologists i want to check out that there was just like a green um like thought that i could check out around the other side i'm gonna run over there to look at it and then i'm gonna pop back over to the cryptozoologists and uh give them the, the real deal give them the, the 411 the t if you will yeah on the door here maybe it's just locked up again you hear the sound of running water. Someone's washing dishes. Okay, not worth uh, the trouble. All right, here we are, ready to uh, give Morel the scoop. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. 
I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. Well, I had a chat with this kid Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. The cryptozoologist purses up, so it was just a child. He looks crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. She turns to smile gently up at her husband. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locusts. It's something else. Yes, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can... The aging cryptozoologist breaks into a hideous coughing fit, which I am not going to try to recreate. She looks in with tender concern. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. He breathes, breathes carefully, not to start coughing again. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. Um... Uh, damn it, maybe I can still restock the trap for you. You can? The lieutenant makes a show of suppressing a sigh. <sighs> Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast, but after this... He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he can not let it drag out after this. Uh, really, it's too much, officer. He starts coughing again. What Morel means is we're grateful for your help. She nods to her husband. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Here's a fresh batch of locusts. They should slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. We will definitely mention you. Should this lead to a discovery? I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. No question about that, says authority. All right, back we go. I'll see you over there, everybody. Okay, here we are. Trap. Time to reload you. The trap stands empty near the reeds. No insect sounds or movement around. Only the reeds' apprehensive hissing. Rain drips from the mesh on the trap. Release the locusts into the empty trap. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Good, now that's done. When do you think we'll return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? He stops. You don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. He doesn't want to, but if there's one more cryptozoological runaround, he must force the investigation back on track. This better be it. Well, um, now report to Lena in the whirling. Okay, back to Lena I go. Okay, Lena, we've restocked. Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. The elderly woman smiles up at you, hopefully. I restocked the empty trap. Where's Morel? Thank you for doing that, dear. She manages a smile for you. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ubulance uh, has left her. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. She looks down at her hands. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. It's probably for the best. It's awfully cold out there in those reeds. I'm sorry, dear. You've had to drudge through them so many times, such as field work, a young person's game, as they say. Her voice is shaky. What's going on here? So who's going to check the traps? Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. Lieutenant stares at his shoe caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. We'll take care of it. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication. But I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. <laughs> Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? Oh, she's given up. Lena, what's wrong? You seem different. Different? How? Uh, the half moons of her glasses reflect you as she looks up at you. You've given up on the phasmid, haven't you? I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. You're in doubt about what? It's a strange feeling. She looks down, biting her lower lip. I haven't really told this to anyone, but you are a police officer. And when a, and when a police officer asks, you must answer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story? Or a dream? 
Seeing the Insolidian Phasmin was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. But Morel told me you'd seen it. You also told me. Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. A terrible sting in her heart. Regret. You seem to really have believed it happened. Doesn't that count for something? No, sweetie. She shakes her head. It's there's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmin's existence. That I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That... And for years, his belief made me believe, too. That I'm a queen, an extraordinary witness to grace. But now we're both getting old, and he's still working himself sick out in these reeds, looking for it. She shakes her head, still unable to meet your eyes. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. He's hiding, uh... These things are tough on him. Matters of love, not violence or deceit. Um, tell her First tell her the marriage hasn't been a lie. I think that's right. Dang it. But it has, hasn't it? A seed can only bear what's inside it. The seed of love is black and oily. Oh, yuck. Uh, has a taste you're quite familiar with. Don't say that. Don't say. Oh, I have to say lying has gotten this far. Why stop now? You might be right, detective. She looks down at her legs. I was a paraplegic before we met. He didn't know before I came in on our first date. If I weren't the queen of the cryptozoologists, if I didn't tell him that story. She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. He'd still be into you. That's not how these things work. Maybe, but then why do I not dare tell him? She sighs. I've wasted enough of your time with this drama. I really must not stop talking about it, lest I start crying and waste more of your time. What you have to know is the Insulindian Phasmid probably does not exist. Let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. Are there? Some of the other things are pretty bad. But the thing is, you're not sure you made it up either. I'm not sure of anything. She looks out the window. Sometimes I still see it, you know, the real memory. Not the memory of the memory, but it's ha so hard to tell the two apart. Rising, unfolding from the reeds on a hot summer's day, like a benevolent god. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel's running a fever, and I need to get him home to Jamrock. Before we overstay, our welcome with Gary. Be careful out there, Lena. Uh, you do that. I'll take to check the traps one more time. Really? Oh, sweetie. She looks at you worried. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. No one can stop you from finding the phasmid. Can I have your address just in case there's news? Okay. It's 1113 Tabernacle Road, Jamrock, but... A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. Be careful out there, Lena. You too, sweetie. She flicks a switch and the engine or chair turns on with a whirr. Thank you for everything, truly. Even though it turned out to be a... The sentence remains unfinished. A waste of time. A dream. A fool's hope, say her lips moving in silence. Uh, like that, she drives off. The gas engine sputters quietly, or not so quietly, as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, it's raining. We should go, too. Somewhere out there, a kilometer to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness to ask the wind once more. All right, we have these fallen pants. I could trade them. I don't know. A little extra saver. Oh, my gosh, that looks terrible. Put on the windbreaker. Oh, man. Do I have shoes that are foam, too? I don't think so. I just have uh, these brogues, which look terrible. Um, I wonder if I'd worn these before I act that, asked that dude for money, if I would have got even more money. Um, well, now I feel like I have to get the whole fallen outfit. So it's, I think we can buy it from that dude. Let me just check. I think I got, I got another skill point. I really 
um, think one more door is not a worthwhile one to keep around. And I want to, I want to try the precarious world. So let's forget this and internalize the precarious world. I don't need those side checks unlocked anymore. So, so fallen sneakers. I'm going to just check what's, yeah, nothing left. I'm kind of tempted to check the traps one more time just to see what happens, but uh, maybe I'll do that after trying to talk to this guy about them sneakers. Everything's still cool here, officer. Do you sell any tapes? Tapes? You mean like music takes? No, music is out. I don't listen to music. I sell extremely cool, cool sunglasses if you want to get your mojo going. He puts points to the shoddy box on the left. All right, so you have no idea whatsoever where I could find tapes. Tapes? The ocean sound preposterous. Tapes are everywhere. They're worthless. Kids throw them in the trees. They're in the butchers or behind his lorry. He nods at the empty lorry cabin behind his back. No one would ever throw a good pair of high-quality plastic sunglasses in the bushes, mister. His smile widens. You should have a look. It's better than nothing. All right, let's check out the bushes. That was unexpected, but okay. Um... The hawthorn tree on the Rue de Saint Ghislaine, bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. All right, see if we can get it. All right, with slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to ext extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to respool it, so you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. The lieutenant looks at the mess in your hands. Only after you've successfully cleaned up the branches does the curiosity get him. What's the tape for, he asked. It's for Egghead. I promise to make his Van Eyck's jam a bit harder. Maybe this ta tape can help. How? It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Maybe Egghead can point me in the right direction. You could also get a fix at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. He looks at his wristwatch a little impatiently. All right, it's a good idea. Let's go ahead. All right, shoes. Aren't there... This guy's got... I think this guy had fallen shoes you for sale. You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. Okay, no. Yeah, oh, $50. Oh, man. I don't know. I'd like to get the whole outfit. But I think I gotta save that hundred for uh, for the youth, the youth center, you know. Ah, uh, what the heck? Let's. Uh, I have these Fallen Ultra Series sneakers. I have no idea what I'm even doing these for. Oh, I've got those Fallen Ultra Series gloves. Where are these sneakers go? I just bought them. Oh, there they are. Look at me. I look absolutely terrible. I thought maybe I'd get a thought for getting all the fallen stuff, but I guess not. Anyway, it's a matching set. Let's uh, see if we can get this tape spooled. Okay. Uh, where's the dude? Oh, there he is. All right, man. Can you fix this tape for me? Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Hey, do you know how to fix this? Show him the bundle of magnetic tape. He looks at the bronze-colored bundling head. You mean respool it? Yeah, I do, but... Great, could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for someone. He slowly finishes his thought. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure, although it looks pretty worthless. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. Worthless? It's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. Huh? He slowly taps his fingers on the counter. What do you mean? Do you know that old church down the coast? Yes, what about it? I help some young ravers turn the place into a nightclub, and they play these weird neo-disco beats there. Is any good? The music, I mean. No, that's the thing. Uh, uh, you can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing to it, no bass. It just goes bazop, bazop, bazop. But this tape could make it hardcore, or not very, I need to funk it up. Yeah, I think, I don't want to see too much. I don't, I want him to be, like, intrigued. 
You're quite invested in this. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light show. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though, so sit back and relax. Uh, you take some time to look around the store. Uh, uh, the play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hands and coughs. Well, thanks for the help. I'm not going to complain about He's helping me for free, so I'm not going to complain about the time. Yeah, my pleasure. I do what I can for two passion, passion projects. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility, okay? I have other business to take care of now. Leave. All right. I am going to just jump to each of the traps and check them. Do that with cuts, and then I will give uh, Egghead the tape, and then finally it will be time to go into the fall or the... Yeah, the last building. All right, here's trap number one. The trap is full of locusts, but they seem weak and unhealthy. A few lie on their backs, their legs twitching. Still no phasmid. Poor things. All right, Egghead is on the way, so let's go and give him this tape, shall we? Okay, man. Is this going to make your jam hardcore? Good morning! Yeah! The words echo magnificently throughout the nave. I found this reel of tape. Maybe you can use it to hard up Ike's jam. Yeah! Remix time! His voice booms to the church as he takes the tape and attaches it to the empty reel slot. Tape goes here! Into deck B! He clicks a switch. The tape starts spinning. A hand on his ear. He listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts, Wow! His face lights up with a light. Did you get this from Arno himself? A great excitement is bubbling to the surface within him. This is big. What do you mean? Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? Ready. Oh, yeah. That does it. That's hard. That is way harder core, man. I am digging that. Oh, hear that? He wipes his brow. The signs match perfectly. Now, if only we had to beat for the full assault. It'd be unbelievably hyper. What's this? A cell looks up from her contact. It's good. How'd you guys do that? You're right. It's uncanny how well it all goes together. Something else must be going on here. Yeah, but what if Van Eyck bases remix on some forgotten local melody, like a folk song? And he was found the original piece that inspired him to create this jam. That would explain why it fits so well. Nah, it's, to me it sounds like classic Van Eyck. I don't think he needs any inspiration from folk songs. Maybe he lives in Martinez and just threw away part of his song because he thought it wasn't good enough. I think it's just happenstance. Chaos in action. Contingencies of our limited existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. He nods to his friend behind the turntables. Noid's right. Egghead's technical talent is the key. No, this is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. It fits too well. Something mysterious is going on here. Um. I mean, even if it is the same song, it's still just luck and Egghead's incredible mixing skills. So... Yeah, it fits! It fits! He pumps his fist in the air. Bring up the volume! And what about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Andre looks back at you. Uh, yeah, remember, you said it needs more bass. Um... What if we used that crazy sound assault from Suna's experiment, but contained, tamed it, made it pulse? Oh, oh! Egg's head puzzled face through the wicked grin. But how? What about that compressor Andre was setting up to achieve some sort of parallel processing? Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam's already pretty ultra. Um, but it could be hyper, hyper hardcore! The audio onslaught can be tamed connected dots that's interfacing let's interface ourselves all up here okay those gauntlets are the only interfacing i can gain let's uh go ahead and try it good morning yeah harder 
It's an even chance. Big money, no whammies. Yes! Sidechain the beat. Sidechain? What does it even mean? Listen, you can use a compressor to select between which track is compressing. Either the auxiliary signal or the main input from the tape. Make it alternate between the signals. The compressor controls the gain based on the level of the signal on the aux sidechain input. It will allow uh, maintaining a loud sound without peaks to fill up all the headspace. Okay, Egg, you need to start sidechaining it. Explain the concept to him. Sidechaining it, you said? He turns on the music, his hands moving deftly across the mixer, setting up the necessary controls. Then he puts on his headphones and his eyes go wide, wider than they've ever gone on drugs. He starts jumping up and down with bliss and total silence, still listening to his headphones. Acel looks up from her microphone. What did you do to Egghead, Copman? Did you break him? Just wait and see. Not an Egghead. Are you ready, posse? Noid straightens his back, ready for the beat. I was born ready, Egg. Give him a thumbs up. That is tight. I, yeah, that's disco. That is absolute disco. I love it. Hardest core. Beautiful. The audio assault is glorious. The speed freak dances on the stage, intensely waving his hands in his air. That's what he's all he's ever done, though. This is beauty! This is life! What in the world is going on? Acela looks on, amazed at the display. The way melody and bass flow together, it's unnatural. We have tamed the sound, made it our own. God damn it! Your Andre said to himself with a thumping beat. This dance club idea just might just worked out! DeLorean Church, the place to be! Egg's losing himself in the sound. Pump it, pump it! This is it. This is a new era. The fabric of the world has been irrevocably altered. Who will be the innocence of hardcore anodic dance music? All right, Egghead. Goodbye. We have made the jam harder core. But that is going to have to be it for here. I think we're going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and, and uh, pop out. We can check those last two traps when we come back. And then head over to check out, um, check out the Falm building that has been waiting for us. But that, I guess we also have a new, we've got Arno Van Eyck. Why did the melody line from a broken and discarded tape fit perfectly into a song played by some, some speed freaks in a frozen tent? Can it be a coincidence? I think not. Maybe it's the hand of the man machine himself in his attempt to craft a perfect song. Maybe Egghead is actually Arno Van Eyck in disguise. Ike? Egg? Hmm. Well, maybe. But we'll find out next time when we check those traps and check out the Fallen Building. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.